All right, so um, I'm going to call the meeting to order. This is a uh, work session for the uh, City of Minna Trista. Um, we have present this evening for the work session myself, Lisa Whalen, the mayor, council members present are Kathleen Refkin, Ann McGregor, Peter Vickery, Claudia Lacey. And then staff present, we have um, Chief of Police Paul Falls, Brian Grimm, Finance Director, Jasper Krugel, um, ad, ad, um, Administrator, and then Ali Polfos, Director of Administration, and our City Clerk, and Meyer Hoff. So with that, we have a number of things on the agenda, City Hall hours, the 2025 additional position discussions, and then donation of Outlaw D. Hunter's Crest 5th edition discussion. With that, I'm going to start out with the City Hall hours. And Jasper, you're going to take that? Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of City Council. Uh, if you um, remember back, I believe to May, mm -hmm. I believe to May, City Council authorized modified summer hours from June through Labor Day. Um, we said we were going to provide a, a feedback to City Council sometime in August. We are here now. Um, looking at you know public input um city council input maybe some staff input if you have some questions about these again i'll remind you the um regular hours that we have um not summer hours are monday through uh friday 8 to 4 30. um the summer hours are monday through thursday 7 30 to 4 30 and friday from 7 30 to noon um so we have let's say staff has not received any complaints i did get a comment from a council member um, that was the only one that we've gotten that, and that's not in this, this memo um, and I'm sure we'll hear uh, about you know this it's yeah it's good feedback um, uh, about the time so I guess what we're looking for is um, we have a couple options we can divert back to regular hours um, after Labor Day um, and then a couple questions that I would have is do we want to have summer hours again next year if we decide we're not going to do it year-round um, if we don't do it year round, we'll likely just, you know, do some internal scheduling to see if there's some flexibility there, um, with staffing, um, if we can do that or not. But I think from a staff perspective, um, being that there weren't any complaints from residents other than the one that we received from a council member so far, um, that we would like to see from a staff perspective, perspective, it going to year round. So I'm here to answer any questions. Um, I see a lot of smiling. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> uh, basically, I had I had a resident go ballistic about it, and she, I almost got into an argument with her about how the hours actually worked out. And um, business is business, and during the winter, if you're going to have summer hours, that's one thing. When you get back to, to business, and that's after Labor Day, you have to go back to regular hours and stay there. Really noted. I kind of agree. It's it's. Um, I I was thinking maybe if you're working from home, but sometimes people are, maybe they only have Friday to get to an office and get things done. And you know, unless we're gonna cut the actual hours back and reduce pay, I mean, hours are hours, and it's it's a job where people come into the city to get. And even if it's one person, it's you know. Someone should be here. And maybe that's you. Maybe, you know, I don't know. I, I, but someone has to be here for people that come into the, to the city. I actually had a thought, and it would actually expand ours. But, okay, so bear with me. Bear with me. Because um, I was thinking um, there's a lot of people that like to come in really early before work. Um, so I was thinking, what if you had at the front desk, both at City Hall and at the police station, you had hours, so you have two people there, yep. so you had hours Monday through Friday, mm -hmm. 7.30 to 5, and one person works those hours, and then the next week, which is 45 hours, the next week, that individual works 7.30 to 4, and you, you switch it, so every day, Monday through Friday, you have 7.30 to 5 open. I mean, no, you, they're and they're just, or right, and, and then, then that person um, that works the second week, um, 7.30 to 4, and has Friday off because of the 80 hours. Mm -hmm. So that equals 80 hours. 
the first week they work 45, the second week they work 35, then they have Friday off. It's Who just a the thought. The other person. So you have some, you have one person there every Friday mm -hmm. from 7.30 to 5. Every, in your, with your Lord, sorry. So, so. It, it, it's a little confusing, but because there's two people at the front desk and there's two people at the PD, you would always have at least one person there, 7.30 to 5. What? No, that's, that's what we'd have to check. That's the only thing we'd have to check to make sure, because it's in a two-week pay period, that we wouldn't have to be paying overtime. What if we just said, who's a morning person and who's not, and someone opts to come in at 7.30 and leave earlier, and the other person opts? You can do that, too. That seems to be easier. Just, you know, maybe they can... If they couldn't agree on that, maybe we could do that route, which is a little bit more complex, but maybe someone is like, I'd really love to come in early and leave a little earlier and pick my kids up, or, I mean, I don't know. I think we could... So you're talking about flex times, yeah. Yeah, like, it, it's open 7.30 to 5, yeah. but you don't necessarily need two people. Yeah. One, so right. one person comes in at 7.30 and leaves at, at 3.30, and the other person comes in at 8.30, 8.30 and leaves at 5.00. 5. That's something, I mean, fine, that's okay, too. And they can switch fine. off and yeah. work together. It's called flex time, then. Um, I think overtime is always after 40 hours. Mm -hmm. All hours worked over 40 hours mm -hmm. per work week shall be considered overtime for non-exempt employees. Okay. So we'd have to change that. Right, right. Um, but you wouldn't if it no. was a flex no. time. No. Correct. I think from just a staff perspective, sorry, We'd probably prefer just to revert back to the 8 to 4.30. It gets a little difficult when people start taking off time and you need coverage for a Friday. And I okay. think um, instead of the 7.30 to 5, just from a staff perspective, I think we'd prefer going just 8.30 to 4.30. We can work something out internally if that's really a desire of, you know, the front desk girls. I think. I don't know. Brian supervises Renee, so. I think so, yeah. It gets a little complicated. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what I would. Do. Yeah. I would do that. And especially the changing hours again, I think would get complicated. Okay. But I, I yeah. love the idea. I think it would be just back to regular would probably be preferred over that. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, I would have the same comments. I think consistency is really important between the two buildings. I think people will get very frustrated if. The hours are a little different, and I know we're not talking about that. It's a little bit uh, more unique next door because Lori does not work 40 hours a week. She is mm -hmm. prorated. She used to leave at 2.30. We adjusted that up to 3.30 because we had more work for her to do. Um, so she works, I guess it would be 35 hours a week. Oh, okay. Um, mm -hmm. So that would kind of uh, yeah, throw a Yeah, 37 and a half. Yeah. She's really close. Yeah. 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 Okay. Right. So she just leaves... Um, at 3.30 each day when we're working regular hours. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's very common for uh, cities to do this in the summer. Yeah. I think where it becomes less co uncommon during, during or less common is in the winter. Right. And I so, think that's what we're saying too, that we'd rather have, I just thought if that was an option to have it open longer, but mm -hmm. that's fine. Right. I, I love the idea. The, yeah. the, the issue, the challenge for me would be if one wants to take vacation right. and it was their they work the heavier week the first week. Yeah, right. Then yeah. the next week I'd have to pay someone overtime to cover it. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, things like that. And that would come up fairly often because there's only two of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Okay. All right. Yeah. So regular hours, go, reverting back to regular hours after Labor Day and then, um, and then consider it again for next summer. Okay. One question. Do you want us to bring it back? For summer hours, or do you want us just to do it like we did this last year and just? And I will note, like, if, if you, and, and I know I told you. I'm speaking for others. I, I just kept my regular hours. So I was the only one here since so I'm on Friday, so. I think 
think it's also worth mentioning that in the summer, we I heard a number of positive comments that people could get here before work, mm -hmm. which they right, really that's enjoyed. It seems like people right. are get going a little earlier in the summer, wintertime, not, maybe not so yeah. much. So there were some positive yeah. feedback. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. For what it's worth. Yeah. So, yeah, I just want to know what the expectations are as far well, as next summer goes. There's three of us that, one, two, three, there's four of us that will be here. Claudia, what do you want to do just next summer, okay? So they're here earlier in the summer? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm okay with that. I mean, of course, who doesn't want to leave early on Friday? Yeah. So to say, oh, they like it. Well, duh, of course they like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, if it really truly is not that busy, um, you know, I can, I can live with that. Okay. Peter? Yeah. Okay. And, and we... <laughs> and we can always, <laughs> if you're getting a lot of feedback about, hey, you know, this isn't working, yeah. we, can, we, always, right. we can always change it back. Um, it's just we haven't gotten that feedback. Okay. Not that much. All right, so we'll plan on going back to regular hours after Labor Day and then summer hours again starting Memorial Day week. All right. Sounds good. All right. Moving on to additional position discussions. Um, is that Allie or Jasper? Um, I will, I'll take the lead and I'll... Okay. Take feedback. I don't know if we want to go. There's three positions. I don't know if we want to take each one individually, or if you want me to go through all of them and then at the end. Oh. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So we will um, start off with the assistant city administrator. So a couple. One of these has already been built into the budget. That's the um, engineering technician, I believe. Um, the other two have not been built into the budget, so I want to make sure that there's a consideration there. So the Assistant City Administrator, um, this was a position that the city has had in the past, I think going back as far to the as far back as to the early 2000s. Um, the last one that we had was when um, Mike Baroni, the previous administrator, was the Assistant City Administrator under Mike Funk. So a couple City administrators ago, this this role kind of went away once Mike Baroni was um, appointed for various reasons. I've heard some stories here there, um, uh, but that it was it was a position. Um, now we don't have it. We have the director of administration. Um, so um, reactivating this uh, position, as you can see, as you can see through the job description, it's a higher level position. There's more focus on strategic initiatives. Um, organizational movement, progress, things like that. Working on, um, you know, larger scale items such as legislative policies, um, working with local, um, uh, local like uh, Hennepin County, those, those types of people. And then just kind of looking at what the, what the initiatives are of the city council and making sure that those are enacted, which is, which is something that I also do. A um, couple, couple items that I've uh, made of note is enhanced leadership and strategic direction, improved organizational efficiency, continuity of leadership. That's one thing um, that was pointed out to me is that every other group that we have has kind of a second in command. Um, you know, the police do, um, public works does, community development does, but the main administration does not at this time. Um, so. And that was, you know, that's a decision that city council makes. Um, so, and we have focus on strategic initiatives and proactive problem solving and innovation. Those are just some items I came up with. So, um, attached in the memo, you'll see a comparison um, that I kind of put together about the director of admin versus the um, assistant city administrator positions. They're quite similar. There are some key differences, mostly those higher level strategic initiatives that you'll see on there. So. Um, based on the scoring of the position um, using the outside consultants and also the, the um, surrounding market data, we propose this to be a grade 11. Now I want to make sure everybody knows where everybody's at because there's been some movements here. So Paul and myself are grade 12 right now. Um, uh, Paul's a grade 11. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Paul's a grade 11. Yep. Sorry. I'll say 12. Sorry. Paul's a grade 11. <laughs> I'm a 12. Paul's 11. The direct, all the other directors are tens, and then um, as the um, rank and file goes, it goes down in, in grades. So just so everybody's aware, sorry I gave you a promotion right away there, Paul. But um, he is at the top step of eleven. But um, 
So just, just you know, if this would be um, a step two entry, you can see the, the budget impact in, in the memo. Um, the personnel committee, now there, we've met about this uh, two times um, at the personnel committee, once March 19th. Um, and we had very good discussion, I think, at this time. Um, I think the outcome from kind of uh, rehashing this with both Kathleen and Ann, um, the outcome was, you know, settled in at a grade 11, step one. Um, there were some questions that came up, though, um, from that meeting, and that's, you know, about what cities have assistant city administrators or assistant city managers, um, what the differences are between the two job descriptions. Um, so we brought that back again to the personnel committee on, I believe, June 3rd. Um, and really, I think during that meeting, we talked mostly about internal equity amongst kind of the director level positions um, and director level support for the position. So um, I thought, well, I should really get this figured out and talk to my directors and see once what their take is on it. I had before um, this meeting, just so you guys know. Um, and um, basically, most of the directors are in favor of this position. So um, I'm not sure if that answers the internal equity piece. Um, but as far as the director level support, you know, the vast majority do support this position. Um, and then at the end of the June 3rd meeting, um, you know, it was basically a personnel committee meeting. We don't vote like EA or name, just kind of nod or shake the head no. And I think that three out of the five um, said we're not going to move forward with this position. And I kind of ended it and said, well, we'll bring this forward at a future city council meeting, which is today. Three said yes, two said no. Correct. Allie, no. Allie left. Oh, Allie wasn't in there. Two, two, two said yes, two said no. Okay. Yep. Right. Yep. So that's where we're here today. Um, comparable city data, you can see the various cities kind of in the region that have assistant city administrators or assistant city managers um, with their populations. Um, so you can kind of see it runs the gamut all the way from, you know, 2,000 people up to, uh, you know, 14,000. I think Rogers is the, the most populous city that has one on this list. Yeah. Yes, do you know which cities have assistant city managers and which ones? I do. Um, let's see, Mound has an assistant city manager because they're the manager format. Um, Victoria, Victoria does as well. Waconia. Wyzetta. Waconia does not. Waconia is oh, an, an administrator. administrator. Wyzetta is a manager. Victoria. And I, I think that's Victoria it. Victoria was too. Victoria is a city manager format. Right. Yeah. Okay. And so Dayton. it's whatever the however you establish your local government you're either a statutory a or statutory b city yeah we're statutory a which is an as, as administrator council not a manager council so that's the main difference so it's not really any they it doesn't do the it make same, a difference yeah same types of things yeah. so um you know i don't know what you gather from the data but you know it, it's basically if the city thinks that they need it it'll be helpful they, they can have it and you kind of see that with the population data here so um, again, going into the benefits received by adding this position, um, really, I, I'm kind of pivoting a little bit about the approach of this as opposed to a person and more of just like these high level, what do we gain, you know, as a city from having an assistant city administrator, a couple things just off the cuff is it provides me time to do more like legislative updates or legislative check-ins, making sure that I'm um, staying networked with other administrators and managers, which I know you know, it might sound like it's fun, but I don't know if you've ever been in a group when a couple of administrators get together, but we just talk about work basically the whole time. So that networking piece is, I think, very, very powerful and, and good for the community. So I pride myself and I, I try to keep up with, you know, meeting with the Mountain City Managers, Spring Park, all those people. So it allows me some time to do that because the, the assistant city administrator um, is able to do some of the analytics stuff that maybe the administrator's done in the past or would, would do. Um, looking at a lot of um, these changes that you see here, um, you know, as far as wages go, that's stuff that the assistant city administrator would, would be doing. Um, so, I'm trying to think, and I don't want to just read verbatim from this, but um, really what, what this comes down to is, you know, the city administrator, myself, I'm recommending authorizing the reactivation of the assistant city administrator position effective 1 1 of 2025. Uh, you can kind of see the budget impacts on the third page, I believe. 
um, for this, uh, the total would be just about $10,000 total for the year, um, of which 4,400 is related to the general fund. So I anticipate there will be some questions. Um, and I'm here to answer any of them. Um, it seems like it would have been good to talk about this before we kind of zeroed in on the budget. But, uh, and, you know, we, yeah, we don't have as much leeway. You know, the we can still adjust that. I mean, if we have to. Yeah, that's true. But I mean, we haven't. We, yeah, we haven't finalized it yet. But we can. Um, we can talk about that too. Um, okay, I'm going to start out. I'm going to say. Um, there's a number of things I think that need to be considered, and that's one um, kind of giving you a little bit of a history and a background on this. So back in the early 2000s, Minatrista didn't have, back even earlier than that, Minatrista only had a city clerk that acted as the administrator. So, and then the city clerk retired and the city um, hired basically our very first uh, city administrator. And um, shortly after that, uh, the administrator said, I really need an assistant. And so it was early 2000s that the city hired their first city um, assistant administrator. And we had an assistant administrator all the time up until 2015 when um, at the time, as he said, as Jasper said, what happened is um, the vacancy occurred for the city administrator the assistant administrator at the time, Mike Baroni, was moved into that position on an interim basis until the new council was in place. The new council came on board and said, yes, we want to keep you as the permanent city administrator. That left a vacancy in the assistant administrator position. At that time, we were looking at um, uh, levies and budgets, and it was pretty tight, as they always are, but um, and what we did when we came on, when I came on board, one of the things that I wanted is better and more frequent communications with our residents. And I felt that that was a very high priority and the um, council agreed. And so Mike said, Mike Roney said, rather than um, having an, an assistant administrator, I'd like to have somebody come in that's good with communications and community engagement events and HR. That's what I need right now. And so he said we could not only, we can add this position, eliminate the assistant administrator position, and we can save some dollars as well. And so the council said, okay, let's go with that. And this was back in 2015, so that's like nine years ago, almost 10 years now. Um, and then um, through the course of events, uh, that position has kind of evolved. It went from strictly doing HR and and um, and uh, uh, communications to then also um, adding more responsibility to that position to now where it's the director of administration. So um, now we're at the cusp again of a growing community, more responsibilities, more more workloads, and so that's why Jasper has come and said, "Hey, I think we need to revert back to that city." assistant, a city administrator. Um, having said that, one of the things that we need to look at is succession planning. Any good organization of our size does succession planning. There's, there's no doubt about it. If you want to be sure that you're, that you're going to have a smooth transition from one person to the next, um, you do succession planning. That's what we've done with with the police department because we want a smooth transition once Paul um, decides to, not in the near future, um, <laughs> <laughs> retire. The other thing is when we didn't have that assistant administrator when Mike Baroni left, it did leave a big void. Now maybe some of you didn't realize that, but I realized it significantly because there wasn't that go-to person at the top, there wasn't that go-to person when Mike was gone, it was just kind of a free-for-all, if you will. So I really felt that need and that void when we didn't have that um, person there. And when, when um, Jasper was out of commission for a while this summer, the same thing happened. It's who do you go to? Who is that 
top person? Who takes the role of that top person? So not only is it important for succession planning, and it's not to say that that person would automatically go into that, that role, that's not a given. It's just that they could at least on a temporary basis take on that role. But it's also they take on that role when somebody's on vacation, somebody, the, the administrator's on vacation, they take on that role when, when they're, they're sick or ill or when they leave. But the other thing is too, if Jasper says he really needs some more help, rather than hiring another person to do that, I think it's better just to expand the current uh, job description and job tasks for somebody and put that, uh, let's say for Allie, putting her into that position and allow, and then maybe I think rewriting the description for, for um, Jasper in terms of what his, his tasks and what, what those tasks expand to then. Because in the past, we've never gone and been very active at the state legislature asking for bonding money. We've never done that before, and now we are. We did. We spent a significant amount of time there last year, not only at the state capitol, but also preparing for it. We also, um, I, I don't want to keep going on and on, but no, I'm just trying to. Too. Well, it's, I think it's helpful because we're a growing community, and we, I think we need that second in command um, to step in when needed and also to expand, be able to expand Jasper's duties. And the other thing too, like he mentioned, not only do we have a second in command for the police department, but we're talking about Randy Storms being promoted to the, um, what is it, director of, or supervisor. supervisor. He would be the second in command for public works. We have a second in command for finance. We have um, Angie there when when Brian isn't there we have we have Nick there that can step in and fulfill the role for David when he's not there or if David were to leave again he could step easily step into David's role what we don't have is we don't have that for Jasper and that's what I would like to see that's what I feel I as a, we as a council need as well as our organization mm -hmm. so that's kind of where where I'm coming from well you had me at Ability to, you know, look for more bonding. Someone. Well, but that's his job. Right. That's but that's Jasper's job description. So what we're essentially doing is using Jasper's job, job description and watering it down. So he doesn't have to do as much, and Allie can do more. And just because we have the job description that we used to have with Romy, we don't necessarily have to fill it. And just because Jasper wants a second in command. Not necessarily appropriate for a city our size. All of those cities up there have significantly more businesses, infrastructure, everything that we do. We are a very residential mm -hmm. town with what five businesses. We're not going to be lobbying the state every year for something. I mean, we have our water project and we have roads. City of Corcoran doesn't have that many okay. businesses. So one. I mean, I, 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 mean, I don't not, know. I don't. Population wise, we might be comparable to most of those. We're, we're not, when it comes to everything else, we are nothing like Laconia, Victoria, Mound. We're not. And, you know, if you say that what are the city's strategic goals, and this is going to help with it, what, what isn't being met now? I mean, that, I mean, how is giving you a second command going to change that? Well, when so, he's at the state capitol, I mean, when he's at the state capitol, then who's going to be in charge of the ship here but when he's not here. I'm just, that's just, I understand, that's just one example. That's just one but, example. But these tasks are not weekly tasks that go on all year. Strategic planning, outside funding, acquisition, public engagement. That's not a 40 hour week job. That's a, at most, what, 40 hours a week total? I mean, mm -hmm. the bonding, okay, fine, but once the bonding is done, we don't get it, which is what turned out. It's not like we're going to keep rebonding for it. Once we build it, we don't get money again. It's done. We don't meet most of the requirements for the local aid, for the roads, for that. We're too wealthy of a community. We, we don't meet the requirements to have a full-time lobbyist. Um, if I, if I, I think you asked the question, right? 
of, of what, I, what I would do, you know, are we just watering down my job description? I, I think, I know everybody knows that I work at the pleasure of the city council. So I will do anything and everything you guys want me to do. It's not like I'm gonna now be working 20 hours a week because of this. There's always additional things that I can do and we can be more strategic in some of the things that we're doing. It'll allow more time. Whatever your heart desires, right? If you want me to go out and try to get federal funding, you know, that'll be something that I could do. If, we, if it's a funding-based, you know, initiative that you guys tell me you want to do, hey, I, mean, I want more outside money. I will find a way to at least get us in front of the right people, right? Yeah. Um, you only have to come up with $150,000 of additional funding to make this a wonderful thing. Well, sure, That's sure. I look at, and, then, and then we get a lot more help, and then, God forbid, if you're unable to do your job or something comes along, we have a backup successor so I mean it's not this huge thing I mean if we can go get another hundred and fifty hundred and seventy five thousand dollars somewhere um, because you're focusing on being able to go down and talk to those legislators then it sounds like a good idea to me yeah and, and I, there's, this, I'm sorry, okay. there's a lot of things we could be pursuing grants wise that we just don't have time to right there's a lot of park grants there's also the, the um, with net council, there's, you know, there's there's a lot of other things that we could be doing that would help out our city. But not only that, but there's a lot of things that Ali is currently doing that the former assistant administrator was doing. So, and they had the title and they had the they had the, Why the thing it? because he can't do it because he's too busy doing all these other things. But her specific job description says any other task assigned by the city administrator. To a point, correct. Sure. Yeah. I mean, everybody's job description has that in there, so we can, right. you know. But and you know, do state like it's going to enhance efficiency and effectiveness. How? How? How will it? There will be another point person if I'm not here. Let's say I'm gone. Um, there isn't. Gonna, I think there was some confusion in the in the job descriptions that the department heads were not going to be reporting to me any longer. They'd be reporting to the assistant. That's not the case. So, you know. But if you're gone, then it's like then they do, correct, yes, because that's the, what the acting city administrator position do. So it would be more efficient if I'm gone, let's say I'm out, there's a question that comes in, there's actually a point person. Who, who does, so if you're gone and Randy has a question, he knows to ask Gary. Right. 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 So if you're gone and Randy storms? Yeah. Well, just use that because it's not coming on. Oh. Right. But I mean, if, Gary, if Gary has a question, then Randy knows to ask Gary. Right. 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 No, no. Uh, I mean, so the administrator were capable of functioning. He did that without Mike, and then we're capable of hiring either a, a new city city administrator. Like we we're not going to stop functioning if Jasper leaves because we don't have a second in command. It's not like the chief leaving where there was an obvious next step to promoting lieutenant Slayer up so you can mark so, the call and move into the So what's role. what's your objection? I don't think the city our size needs this role. Okay. I don't, I don't think we need it. I don't think Jasper needs a second in command. If the only reason is because we need someone that the directors need to go to if Jasper's gone, then add that description assistant in interim in, assistant city administrator to the current director of administration position. I mean, in my mind, if this is it, in my mind, when Jasper's out and I don't know who to ask, I generally ask Allie or like if it's a public person, I email Gary. Like, I pick the person who would be the next logical person to answer the question I need. So you're willing to step into it every time? Yes. yes. But at this point, we we'll be at a compromise point. But here's, here's the thing that I'd like to point out. When Jasper, when we hired Jasper, um, I clearly recall that his comment was, I, and our question was, what do you think about the organization and so on? And, and he, his comment was, well, I would want to take a look at it and I may want to make some changes, not immediately, but I may want to make some changes down the road. And we said, fine. Now he's asking to make a minor change, a $4,000 annual change, and we're sitting here saying, we don't think you need it. 
And I, I have an issue with that because I don't run the city. Mm -hmm. We don't run the city. He has to run the city. And if he comes to us and says, same with the chief, when he says, I need another officer, um, I, I want to promote the lieutenant to deputy chief, do we say, no, we don't think you need that? When Gary says to us, he needs another, um, he needs another public works person, and I want to promote Randy to the soup, to the be a superintendent. Do we say no? We don't okay, think you need that. That's software. But We're talking that's, people. That's Brian's second in command. What software is his job? Right? He can do his job right now. He can do his job right now. I'll, I'm trying to give you some some examples of where we've said yes, and so I'm having a difficult time understanding why there's consideration to say no. That, that's what I don't understand. Can I ask Allie, what are your thoughts? Can we ask that? Can I ask that? I or concur. Do you think there's a need there? I concur with Lisa, and it's so awkward because we're talking about me, right? But, you know, I think what's getting lost in translation is I'm already doing it. Nothing, I mean, yes, it'll be enhanced, but it already is enhanced. I'm already doing it. We're already super efficient. We're already, you know, the staff has never been better here. You know, that's already happening. I think this is just reflective of what has been happening. Do you think we're missing out on other opportunities because we don't have another body to go do it? Jasper says we are, so yes. And I, we don't, I believe and that. Here's, but He's the only one that would know that. I don't we're not adding another talking. body. Right. We're, we're not adding another body. Correct. We are, we are elevating her to the status yeah. that she's already performing. And That's, then in a year okay. we're not going to come back and go, oh, we need a director of administration now because Alex has been doing this job and now there's this big gap. And then she doesn't have time to do the um, speech for the meetings or the minutes for the or the Christmas party or the, technology, the social media page. I mean, you, you But she's already it. doing what Jasper needs I don't think that'll happen. Um, I, I mean, I, I don't. I can't predict the future. I don't know what future needs will be of the of the city, but um, I don't foresee that happening. Um, if that gives you any solace, but mm -hmm. I don't. I don't see that happening. I mean, I. And I don't know if we can circle back to maybe Ann's mediation compromise. Um, there's something, and we're gonna get a little into the weeds, is um, pay equity reporting. So if we would just add something to a job description, and we just did this, I think last year, I think we did it, and we have to yeah. do it every three years. Yeah. But, yeah. but they look at it, and one thing that would concern me is that our only female department head would have these additional tasks, they look at that, they look at how the positions are scored. This position would be scored higher because of, if we would add everything from the assistant admin position to the director of admin, it'd get a higher score. Our pay equity reporting might come out wrong. Um, right, it's been good. I mean, we've passed every year that I've been here in previous years too, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I will note, just I think this question kind of came up, is I don't exactly know how um, Mike Baroni was utilizing the director of admin position. I feel I'm probably utilizing that position differently than him. I don't know if anybody else, you know, because I came into this, I had an idea of, hey, this is the director of admin. In my mind, that's essentially the assistant administrator. Um, so I, you know. <laughs> I think it's, it was COVID. We were all from home. It was such a different work environment. But yeah, I would say I do a lot more analytics. I mean, I just say yes to whatever Mike asked me to do or what Jasper asked me to do, and Jasper has just asked me to do more, which I love. I love learning, and I, I, love I have no issue with anything he asked me, but yes, I would say I do more than I did under Mike. Not that I wasn't capable, or he just didn't ask. And we worked from home for a year when I started, so just a different environment back then mm -hmm. also. And I mean... What are you doing now that's not in your current job description? I don't... You'd have to sit down and really... I mean, I think the job... Specifically asked you what Allie's doing now that she isn't in her job description. I think my job description is the assistant administrator title. 
personally. I think okay, it's so just, it's the title. The, the, so here's the other thing talking about pay equity. When you look at it, she's the only female department head and she earns far less, she didn't far less. Years. I understand, she's been here forever. I understand that, but, so here, it, well, actually, I don't hear but, but mm -hmm. she does have a master's degree um, and you don't need to have a master's degree to be a public works um, director. You need experience. We're getting a little bogged down but in the description. I, I, the I description's understand. a guide for the right. position, too. So, and it's used to score it. I'm just, know. let's kind of, I, under, I understand where you're coming from. And, um, and Peter, I think when you value someone, I, I, I mean, it, Allie's sitting right here, but she is so hardworking and gracious and accomplished and educated and we're so lucky to have her and I think this is a good idea. All right. I, I, I said all right. If you thought you were doing 630, we're going to because that's what this is about. This has been, we've been around about this now for quite a long time and so we have to do this till 630. We're going to. Go ahead. If you thought you were doing the job of the assistant of the city administrator, when we re-looked at everyone's jobs and everyone's pay and everything, why didn't you say, I think I'm doing, I, my job description is not what I'm doing. I, I mean, because yeah. she's, no, like, she's humble. She's I mean, I mean, she is. I mean, if you want to vote no, just vote no. I think yeah. rehashing this is just ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, she's not coming to you with this. It's me coming I'm not, to you with this. I'm just saying vote no. You know? We have to work it out how we're going to do it. So, I mean, it's, it's, I would say, I would describe it as humble. She has never come to me and said, I want this. This is 100% my recommendation to you. Correct. If we were to go out and advertise for this position again, it would not be advertised as a HR co um, communications coordinator. I can tell you that. And and when you look at how many people qualified individuals we had for this position when Allie was hired, we had two, two individuals that were qualified. And um, so, if we were to go out today and have to rehire this, we would probably we would either get none or very very few qualified individuals. And I'm going by what what's been the the um, data. And what's been the history? I mean, I, I can only go by that. Um, we had two qualified individuals. Five years ago. No, um, in four years ago. Twenty. You came in in twenty twenty. Early twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. Okay, Peter. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I can just speak from personal experience, and, and you know, I've learned over the years that I, I can't keep track of everything, and I often need sounding. Assistant that can think through things, and business partners can think through things. Mm -hmm. you know, there's big things to keep everything running and um, pick up things that maybe I hadn't thought about. Or just, I mean, it's just so valuable to have that mm -hmm. second opinion of you know, the person. So mm -hmm. I'm in favor of this. I think it really makes sense. Okay. <laughs> Thank
solve things very quickly. I, I told you when I met you, I didn't think it was possible. You did it. You did really, really well. It's been a fabulous two years. You need to move into new challenges and new things, mm -hmm. which leaves the door open for her. And I don't think she's against what I'm saying. I, that's okay. a really good point. I have a thought, okay. and I don't want to lose it. Yeah, go. So, go. No, <laughs> okay, so we've been talking about more uh, commercial development as an example. That would be something that Jasper could work on along with David because David doesn't have the time to do it on his own, but Jasper might be able to work on that. And we want more commercial development along Highway 7. That, that's, I'm just, I just thought of that. That just might be, might be one thing besides, of course, the bonding and the grant writing and things like that. So I think that there's, there's definitely um, more work that can be done that, that Jasper could do if he had a little more time. Okay, so let me throw out the idea. I'm an idea trigger person, and basically everybody has to finish the idea so I can never finish it myself. Okay, so we'll try. The, the, the idea, is, uh, here, what I'm thinking is, is that we, we go along and we say we are going to do this in a certain time frame, but we don't do it until we have looked at his position and decided what new challenges he has. What do you think about that? I like that more. <laughs> I think we just said what the challenges are to, you know, well, develop more story. businesses. And more I want to know what, what's, okay, I want to know why you can't get everything done in your work week. I want to know what's coming off your plate that she's now going to be doing, and then what you're going to fill those hours with. Because, again, yes, helping David get more community development and more um, businesses and everything commercial along 7th Street, that's not a full-time job. But, but he wouldn't be doing just that. Right, he would be I doing everything that. that he currently does along with those extra duties. Right, but what do we, he, he's not going to do everything he's doing now because a bunch of it is going to be moved to Alley. Not a bunch, really, not a no, bunch. I, I mean, I can, I can answer that um, if you want. The, really, we've been acting this way pretty much since I started, right or wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, I rolled in, I saw, you know, the different people that I'm going to be working with when I came in here, and I said, well, this person's capable of doing this, and Allie's been doing a lot of the things that we're talking about now, right or wrong. Um, feel free to look at my job description. Put whatever you want in it. At the end of the day, I, will, I do everything you guys want to do, right? Like, yeah. we have strategic yeah. planning yeah. sessions every year. You say, this is what we want to do. Um, I don't know. I mean, you can do the job description stuff, but year to year, these strategic <sighs> priorities change. And if you want something done, like that's a great time to talk about it. We can hash it out. I can tell you what we need to do to accomplish that goal. Whatever it is, right? It's, it is literally whatever you guys want. Um, so we can look at my job description. You could put some higher level initiatives in there. But really, I answer to the five people up here. Uh, and, and I think I've done a good job of getting the things done that you've wanted done. Yes. Um, I wish I could have gotten some money, uh, you know, but, you know, that we, we kind of have, it's, it's a, that's a tough, tough thing for this community to get, but we can continue to keep doing that. Um, so I'm all for that. I will. The difference is Allie's been doing the job of an assistant administrator, and that's what he's trying to say. She's been his sounding board. She's been the second ideas, mm -hmm. and so she's been doing that job for the last you know, year and a half. Of, so then, not really, but, but even if it were, we're still not paying her what she's valued at and right. what, she's, what she's doing. So that's, I think, I think to Claudia's point, and it's like we need to value all of our employees um, for what they're worth. And I do think, and I've worked with Ellie you know, for four years, and she's been fantastic. You ask her to do something, it's done. I mean, not yesterday, not ye not tomorrow, but yesterday. You know, in, in half an hour, in an hour. And it's, it's even on weekends, I've called her and said, sorry about this, but, and, and she'll get back to me. I, I value that, I don't want her to leave, and I can see the handwriting on the wall. Because mm -hmm. she has a master's degree, she's mm -hmm. been acting as an city um, assistant administrator. She's prime, prime, prime to be plucked out from under us. I agree. I think she's got a master's degree. I think she's excellent at her job. I think she'll be valued. She is. 
I value her tremendously as a new council member, and I think, you know, God forbid, uh, some big city plucks Jasper. She's an intelligent, professional woman. I think she could step into that role um, as a city administrator. So, I, I vote yes up to this. But we're not there yet. But I'm 100% well, there. Well, what I it. what I would recommend is this because we do have to make a decision. Um, I don't object to rewriting some of the um, job descriptions, adding whatever tasks you feel that Jasper needs to do, but I think we should go forward with, with the um, promotion of Allie and write, rewrite, if you will, the job descriptions for both positions so that it's very clear to all of us what, and basically it's going to include everything Allie already does, but then it might include some other tasks that you feel that Jasper should or could be doing. Duly noted. I mean, I, I'm not going to do that. Can I just say that I, I, I think it would be good for everyone to vote yes on this. I've seen split decisions on these type of items in the past, and it's not good. I guess as far as just, I think Allie, the more I listen to the conversation, I think she deserves it. The biggest concern I have is in a couple few years if Jasper and or Allie leave, I just want to make sure that people in there, and I hope they don't, or whatever, that, that there's not a, I've had it in the past, and that's my biggest reservation with the assistant city administrators. We had someone that was fresh out of college, no experience, and they were technically my boss. And it was, <laughs> wasn't a good situation. Yeah. We had a new administrator, a new assistant administrator, and it was a little bit of a not great situation. So as long as there's professional people like who are in the positions right now, I'd say yes, and it'd be good. So you're but okay with it, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Let me be clear. I'm not. I'm not leaving. I know that. Let me be clear. <laughs> not stop. Well, we're not a big enough community to keep doing that. But she's already. Basically, what we're doing is we're going to be paying her what she's deserving of being paid. And in order to do that, we're saying, here's your new title. You're still going to do all these things that you do, plus maybe some other things. And and it adds succession, and it adds um, that, that void. Should, should something happen to Jasper, he gets hit with a beer truck or something. Um, you know, so, I mean, it's, it's all these things. It's not just one thing. It's not just saying we want to keep her. Of course we do. It's all these other things as well. So that's... I mean, when you look at all the, the, the one, two, three, four, five, and six, and seven reasons why we should do this, in my opinion, the one reason we shouldn't is simply because she's already doing it. And the, all the other reasons are there as well, why we should do it. So that, that's where I'm coming from. I think Brian has a point. It's too bad if we can't be a 5-0 on this. I understand your position, um, and you have a right to your position. Um, and if you have to vote no, I think everybody would understand that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so we're not going to vote work session, but what we're looking for is direction to put this in the budget for preliminary levy adoption in September. So this isn't in the budget, but what we're looking for is not yes, no. You'll always be able to... I mean, technically, you can do whatever you want with the budget as long as it goes down after September. Um, but what we're looking for tonight for this position and also the lead position would be just put them in the budget. We'll put them in the budget. Um, there'll be a slight, very small impact. Um, and then that'll be considered in the, the preliminary levy that you'll consider on, I think, September 4th. All right. So and I'll just note... They'll come back in December for like on the consent or if someone wants to vote for consent, the promotions. Yeah. 
Yeah, so the actual, the if, if they're in the budget, they will also be adopted on when the actual <coughs> final budget is adopted. Correct. On December 4th. Or second? Second. Whatever the first meeting is in December. Is it the second? Second, it's, December yeah, 2nd. Yeah, second. December 2nd. Mm -hmm. So we're not formally approving anything. We're just getting the direction to put it in the budget where it'll be looked at again a few other times throughout the year. It's just not in there right now. Okay. All right. All right, so public works supervisor. So I'm, I'm seeing nods from You're at least four, three, yeah. so we'll put it three, in the budget. Four, yeah. okay. Three, maybe three, three or four. Three and a half, three, three and a half nods. <laughs> four, all right. I, I, um, I think there's our reservations and I think they are addressed. And we'll go forward and make that happen. Public works supervisor. Yeah, so we kind of talked a little bit about this already with the um, no, that's next. Oh, engineering tech. Okay, yep, sorry. Sorry, engineering technician. Um, this position is in the budget already. We just want to talk about it because it's new. Kind of um, discuss it. Basically, this is going to be a new position um, starting in July. Is what we're proposing, July first. So start of Q three. Um, and what this role will of essentially twenty five. Twenty five. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, essentially, what this role was designed to do is to take away some of the um, construction observation admin piece that we pay WSB for when mm. we frank about it. Good. But that's a huge number when we have a project. Um, sometimes that number is you know, $700,000 for a big construction. I and I want to make sure it's clear, I've said this before, that this position won't fill that void completely, but it will pick away at it. And if it's successful, you'd likely see another position like this maybe in the future. I think we kind of identified that maybe two would be a good fit eventually. Um, the timing of this one is is um, special because we we have proposed a large project in 2026 that we want to make sure this person is able to participate in and, and, and buy down that cost from WSB. So really to be kind of a, um, I don't know if you want to call it a, a gopher position, but it is high level. You need education. You need to have some engineering background, some road roadway construction background. Um, so it's not like they're just running around looking at stuff. They know how to, they need to know how to read plans. They need to know how to do a lot of the, the stuff that Gary knows how to do, but it's new. Um, that's kind of what it is in a nutshell. This is in the budget. I don't know if there's any questions. We could like approach Adam Gabois. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so <clears throat> that's a good question. <laughs> Right out of college, you don't get your, you like don't your get PE. The so yeah. a lot of engineering firms will hire people with, with engineering degrees, but then they don't get a PE unless they get experience. Mm -hmm. Could be one of those that maybe don't make the cut for you know one of the big engineering firms. It could be somebody that works for a roadway specialist. I mean, unless it, it all depends on probably pay, right? And what we're gonna pay them. Um, but you could get somebody with like roadway experience from like a, an existing contractor that says, hey, I know this stuff, of, I, I just want to get out of the business, mm -hmm. um, but I'm really well educated, I know what to look for, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so we'll have to see. There's no guarantees. There, there's uh, a lot of com communities hire engineering technicians. Mm -hmm. Um, but they do get poached regularly from other engineering firms once they're here for a couple of years. So, and then like, well, like you're saying, we couldn't possibly cover all the needs we have. How, do you have any sense? I guess it depends on the school level, but, um, mm -hmm. how much we can save. And seem, seems like we're still going to need uh, uh, a lot of. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. I will say that we don't know the exact numbers, but I will say when we have a heavy construction year like we will in 2026, that'll more than pay for the position. On the years that are slower, like maybe this year, it'd probably be maybe 50% paid um, in savings. You know, either from the, you know, it's it's hard to, to correlate with like tax dollars because, um, you know, we pay WSB with CIP funds that are sitting in this fund that get you know, filled with tax dollars, but it's not a direct levy hit. Mm -hmm. um, so that CIP fund will, will grow more. Um, one other outcome will be that if we have to bond for a project, that project um, we won't have to bond for as much potentially because we have um, that component of, of 
construction observation is coming from in-house. So it's it's hard to pin down for like actual tax savings, but there will be long-term tax savings for the community um, on big con construction years and then on lighter construction years, some, but probably not as many. We're working on other avenues for revenue generation, such as like um, final grading permit sign-off, uh, other development things. Like in Woodland Cove, we have a hard time getting somebody out there when they're replanting trees. Yeah. Like this person could be out there saying, hey, you're not planting this tree to spec. Um, and you know, if you do it this way, it's gonna die in five years. Whereas if you do it the right way, it might actually live. Mm -hmm. um, so this, there'd be some intrinsic community benefits as well, um, as well as financial. Would we have any, I mean, now I assume we have some recourse to, uh, to our outside engineering firm if they messed up. Um, if it's in-house, then we don't have any recourse. Is it, have we had any things like that happen, or is that just kind of not really? Uh, we, we have, definitely. I mean, there's been a couple instances that I know of. One, one while I was here with, or I guess right before I got here with the driveway that got cut that had electric um, heating elements in it. Um, and I think WSB and maybe the contractor split that cost. So mm -hmm. some of that stuff does, those things do happen. And if that would happen under our watch, it would be our dollar. It, it happened on Halstead too. When we did the Halstead project, there were some questions about that, I think with WSB and whatever, and then yeah, WSB probably. picked up, yeah, picked up some of that. But this person would report to Gary and um, there's no doubt in my mind, Gary would be easy to do it this way. Like, I think a lot of times, a lot of times with the, with the um, engineering person, they're doing these things like after after hours, and they're you know I don't know you know we have more control, which I think is a benefit, and I, I think we'll have less um, liability if we do it in house as well. How many? So let's ask some of the same questions. How many communities, let's say that we're on this list here, have uh, in house technicians? You know, engineering technician. Do you know? That's a good question. I don't know um, off the top of my head. I'm trying to think if I do. I know, it'd like, be, it'd I, be nice to know, number one, but it'd be also nice to know what exactly are we looking at on an average, on an average, um, you know, how much are we going to save? Because we're going to have to pay this person, um, let's just say 100000 I don't know, 120 whatever it mm -hmm. is. And then what what would we save on an average over, let's say, five years or three years? I, would, I mean, in my mind, the, over the first three years, the goal is like probably 50% of their wages and then build up from there. Because I think we're going to find additional development-related revenue sources that will then buy that down okay. a little bit. So mm -hmm. we don't know that exactly because right. it's all development-based and project-based, but... You because know. we're going to continue to develop, we're going to mm -hmm. continue to have those. Correct. I, I think it, I honestly see this working out. I, mean, I, I see this working out well where the point maybe in four to five years we say we're going to try to hire another one. Yeah. Okay. And hopefully that same person is here. But it is a highly competitive yeah. field. I, I okay. heard. Yeah. What? Civil engineering um, it would be civil, yeah. It, it could it, be, yeah. I mean, it could be. I, where I was in Northfield, they had them there a little bit. There were about 18,000, 20,000 people. Um, they had two of them there. Mm -hmm. and that's where kind of that's where I got kind of acquainted with them. And, and they're busy. I mean, they're out there as much as well. Can. As long as we're doing development projects. and then we're doing road projects, it's gonna that individual he or she is gonna stay busy. And they're working for us, right? They're not WSB or. Sure. Molten and yeah, like whatever you know. <laughs> so I, I think this will make our constituents happy because they're for it, us. It should be. And like a year like this year, with the limited number of projects that we have, <clears throat> I would estimate that this person would be able to handle all the construction. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whatever we paid WSB for that for our projects this year, we wouldn't even have a, a cost. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. so just one suggestion. Peter was kind of asking before on, um, you know, he had budgeted for the um, engineer technician um, in current. What if we put off hiring that person until like October, November of 25? That would kind of, uh, that would more than offset that. And it would still give that individual another five to six months um, of feet on the ground experience, getting to know the city, et cetera, before the construction 
um, phase or before the construction season started. So, you know, we, it, that might be an option too. It would cut. It would cut the cost that you see up there in That's half, basically. Right. Um, you know, we could post it in July and then hopefully hire by October. Right. But, you know, the one thing is we won't. If we hire them in, let's say July, there still will be a tail end of a, a street project, a maintenance project. But we already you know, have hired somebody to to do the to construction, do the construction yeah. observation. Yeah. For that, yeah. So, so I think it. Yeah. It wouldn't. If we wanted to, to do that at like a Q4 hire, I think that would be fine. If we wanted to do that, I think there's a little bit of benefit to doing it at mid-year. Um, even if we're not going to save the money, they could get acquainted with the project and all the people while they're working and, and things like that. So there's benefits to both, but if you think that the 27000 is worth waiting until October to hire. Well, then I'm just thinking we'd still be at that 9.5%. Well, what if we want them to get experience during the project? But the projects would almost be done by then. Well, hopefully he's, yeah, but hopefully, hopefully he's, this person, he or she has had the experience, you know. I, I would hope that they wouldn't come in, um, you know, as a complete rookie. Yeah, we'll teach those rookies that they've seen, seeing what they do and how things are handled and what level we expect during the project. And we can keep it in the budget the way it is, and if the direction is in 2025 that we want to wait, we can definitely wait um, to hire. Um, it's, you know, the assistant city admin has a pretty mini minimal impact to right. the budget. Right. Um, the proposed levy that, that you've seen already. Um, you know, you can always find, if you get a, if you get more of a inkling as far as the direction you want to go before December 2nd, we can always make that, that switch at that time too. Okay. Whatever. I mean, it's... It could just organically happen. Yeah. I think hiring that position is going to be difficult. So... Right. Yeah. Right. Okay, are we on board? Okay, then the next one is um, the, public works. Yep, the public works supervisor. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of council. Um, right now we have a, uh, an employee, Randy Storms, who's the public works lead, which is a union position. Um, throughout, I guess, when the last, I guess, Gary was promoted in 2022. Um, since then, Randy's kind of taken on some of those um, assignment duties and working directly with the crew, which uh, the lead does, but also this is kind of morphed into doing um, uh, employee reviews and things of that nature. Uh, so really what this does is it kind of, it, the position again has morphed into a supervisor role. The other issue that I think was brought up, um, and this is a union thing, so I'm, I'm you know, not entirely sympathetic, but the, the lead position supervises some people that make more money than them which, you know, on the hierarchy side isn't always the best, you know, if you're supervising you know, somebody that is getting paid more, but that's the way it was this contract and the previous contract. So it's not something new, but it was brought to our attention, just, you know, not necessarily requesting anything, but just say, hey, did you guys notice this? And, you know, when we're negotiating union contracts, we basically do the blanket um, increase for each group, and that's what it is, and that's just how it worked out. So that's another component that it was, you know, I think that's what brought it to our um, attention from that employee. And then Gary kind of said, yeah, we should do this. So it's recommended by Gary. Um, this is not something that's in the budget. So this would be uh, something that would, um, that would be, uh, have a budget impact. And as you can see from this table, the general fund would have roughly a zero dollar and the enterprise funds would, would capture all of that. So no levy impact, and there you'd see some impact to um, rates for sewer, water, storm sewer, those things. So it's recommended by, by us to, to proceed with that. And as Allie said, these things will be finalized. These would be finalized on that December 2nd meeting. Okay. Questions? All right. And we're okay? Move forward? All right. Next, then, the donation of Outlot D and Hunter's Crest, and that's why Ron Beatty is here again. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and so I threw this on here. We don't need to talk about this right now if we want to cut this short because it is on the business side. 
I just wanted to maybe provide an update to everybody here so we don't get into the you know nuts and bolts of this. Um, I can just give a quick update. I think everybody's familiar with where this is at because we talked about it before, but this is in Hunter's Crest. Um, they originally came to us and said, hey, your sewer line's on our property, get it off. And we said, sorry, we're, we're um, utilizing prescriptive easement rights or we're declaring that, you know, sorry, we're not gonna move it, move it. Well, then they came back and gave us a couple different options, one of which was for them to donate the land to us. And we said, well, let's look into that. Maybe, um, you know, we have to be very conscious. We, you know, we don't wanna see anything happen that we're not anticipating. Um, so Ron is here, I asked him to be here because um, there's a donation agreement that's in the packet that we've looked through with a fine tooth comb to make sure there isn't anything that is in there that would you know, be harmful to the city. Um, I think Ron is confident to say that the donation agreement is good. Um, we, don't, we don't feel like it, it does. So it really comes out so to- So here's the reason why we want to make sure, I'm gonna make you, cut you short, yeah. I'm sorry. But the reason we want to make sure that we're completely covered is because as you know, this um, developer is a little bit like this. So, Ron, have you reviewed this? Is there anything you can think of? <laughs> well, I have, and, and let me just add a little bit more detail to what Jasper said, because this actually came up when I was here, and you're right, my first response was, gee, I think we have a prescriptive easement, even though we were a little bit short of the 15 years. And then what I said is, gee, I'm glad you came forward because there's a pond on that property and you know, the owner of the property is responsible for maintaining the pond. So I'm glad you come forward and identified yourself because now we'll know who to look to to, to take care of the pond. <laughs> Crickets after that. And then they went after the title company. They sued the title company and got some sort of settlement. I don't know what it is. And now they've come back to us. Well, now we are past the 15 years, so I think we have a good argument on uh, prescriptive easement. Luckily, it's, it's abstract property where you can get a prescriptive easement. Nonetheless, I think it's very likely that uh, they would sue us. I think they're, they're looking to make some money. You know, they got some money out of the title company. They haven't been successful with us. I think their plan B, as reflected in the, the agreement, is they're going to make this donation and get a tax deduction. Uh, and that's between them and the IRS. I think the advantage to us is it takes all this thing, all of this off the table. To answer your question, yes, I've looked at the agreement. We've negotiated back and forth, or Sarah has. The main issue is that they wanted us to act very quickly. We said we can't do that because we need to do some due diligence. Mm -hmm. So the version in the packet before you says we have until December 20th, which is four week, four months from tomorrow, uh, to look at title, do any kind of environmental review, whatever we want to do to make sure that we're not buying into a problem. And if we are, if we discover, discover that we are, we back out of the deal and we don't take it. Otherwise, uh, then we accept the donation. They can do whatever they want with the, with the IRS, and we don't have this threat hanging over us. Okay. Sounds good. Any other questions? We don't know. Uh, well, we've done right? we've done swamp on it. Yeah. It's yeah, it's not bad. I mean, it's we we don't think that it, it'll be at least 15 years. Um, before any substantial maintenance is required. We'll probably bow it a little bit more than they do right now, but um, but otherwise it's in decent shape. It, it, I think it always has been a wetland, so it's kind of a naturally occurring pond. Um, yeah. So I think it'll, I th the recommendation if you look ahead is is to accept the donation and, and start the due diligence process okay. to kind of clear up the issues that, that Ron and If I could add something, I don't really think we take on much more risk on, on ownership on the pond because if you've got an owner who has a stake in the pond, like an HOA, an operating HOA, who wants to continue to operate it, then you've got somebody who's likely to take care of it. Yeah. With these folks, yeah, you don't, yeah. they're gonna they're gonna go away. Yeah. I mean, we're gonna end up uh, doing that anyway, uh, taking care of it, in my opinion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, good. good. Thank you, then. All right. With that, then, that concludes our work session, and we can be adjourned if there's a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Okay, thank you. All those in favor, signify with aye. Aye. All those opposed, motion passes by vote. We will reconvene at 7 o'clock for our regular meeting. <laughs>